know how much I care for you. Well, if you care for me, you be quiet while I listen to Pet Talk Radio. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, if you wonder what that was, uh, that was some chooks because we're going to talk about <laughs> chicken camp. <laughs> it's everywhere, it's everywhere. <laughs> Come on, Dave, tell us all about chicken camp and why the hell are you holding a chook? Um, <laughs> because, because, because it is not Mardi Gras for poultry. No, it is, um, <laughs> it is of course, uh, where we make better trainers out of um, animal trainers by getting them to train chooks in set behaviours. And uh, it... it the basic thing is that dogs, of course, have been bred to be so very, very forgiving of us and um, and allow us to treat them in ways that probably we uh, could do better. And um, so what we do is we improve our timing and we improve our positive our rate of positive reinforcement uh, by training a chook because, of course, a chook, if it gets bored and you don't have your timing right and you don't have your um, rate of reward correctly, well, then, of course, the chook's just going to fly away. But it's awesome because we we train the chooks to um, discriminate in colours. We train the, train the chooks to um, do little agility courses and go up over bridges, and uh, it's, it's phenomenal. And the reward that you get as an animal trainer is really phenomenal because, look, if you can train a chook, I reckon you can train just about anything. I reckon tickety has got her eye on these treats yeah, and go, I want to be trained. I want to be trained. Yeah, I, yeah. No, I reckon these chooks have got ours well trained. Yeah, 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 <laughs> it could totally. be the case. That yeah. one that you're holding, Joanne, is uh, Ginger, and she's my oldest bantam, oh, and she's, she's a beautiful. real sweetheart. She is. Yeah, she's, she's very beautiful. cuddly, actually. And this is little Yashimi, and she's really not as keen about being held, but she's tolerating it. But they're cool, cool as creatures. Aren't oh they? yeah, very, very awesome. But um, at the moment, at home, I've got all the, uh, the the dropouts, the ones that didn't respond so well to training. So they're all ready to um, start giving us eggs in about a week's time. Um, but the rest of them are all still in training, ready for chicken camp, so that they they understand that they've um, well they've been desensitised to tables, so that they're ready to go. And uh, we're only what, a couple of weeks away. It's five, six, seven of July, okay. and then there's that's tri- that's chicken. Tra- chicken training camp and um, and so that's where you know people uh, I think all the training positions have been filled but there's still um, other positions where people can come and observe and learn um, and that's definitely for the people that are a little bit nervous of poultry they can stand back a bit and then on the 7th there is a coaching seminar so Terry okay. Ryan of course the um, doyen of chicken training who's coming out from the United States she's going to be taking the whole process and the um, coaching humans seminar on the Sunday so Joe, what do you reckon about chicken training is that uh, is that something you'd get into or suggest people get into yeah chicken behavior is amazing I almost did a PhD in chicken behavior believe it or not <laughs> but then I you thought really how that would them. sound actually yeah. Yeah. I made yeah. it in chickens. I'm, I'm the chook doctor. Yeah, yeah, it has yeah. a certain ring to it. It does have a ring to it. I, I used to it. spend hours and hours watching chickens when I was at university. It's mm. fun, believe it or not. <laughs> Although they were in this huge covered straw yard with like one or two thousand chickens. And I swear I'd go in with my jeans on, I'd come out wearing nothing because they'd pick them all apart. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, they're very friendly. I like to think that they were just saying hello rather than wanting to eat your jeans. Yeah, yeah. But they certainly recognise people. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, the eyesight's amazing. So they have a completely yeah. different way of, you know, well, most birds do have different vision. And the way they look at each other is not the way we see them. It's, it's the ultraviolet range. So they have ah. beautiful, you know, blues and reds, really outstanding colours that they oh. see. Yeah, and they see vast distances because as soon as I come out in the morning and before I've even gone outside, they can see me through the French doors and it's quite a distance yeah. and they're waiting all lined up on their little roost. These are my chooks, by the way. <laughs> um, they're very cool chooks. And they that's are. what you think. We're taking them home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but they also um, see the difference in texture. So when we do the colour discrimination stuff, if one of the discs that we're using is slightly different in texture, they're picking up on that. We, we're just looking at a red disc yeah. and we think that's a red disc, that's a red disc. But of course the chook is like, no, that red disc has this tiny little difference, therefore that's the only one in the discrimination right. test. So this they, one's peering into your mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're about to get a chook kiss. That's, that's tickety, as in tickety-boo and um, she really thinks you're something special Farmer Dave and, and oh, I'm not she surprised. She can smell my rooster back home and she's like, take me home to him. Oh yes. He sounds dreamy. You've, you've got a cock back home do you? <laughs> yes. I've got a very big cock. He's massive. Yeah. He's a um, uh, Plymouth. 
A Plymouth Rock. <laughs> oh, you guys. Plymouth Rock. Wrong. Rooster. You guys are wrong. Yeah. 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 Yep. <laughs> I didn't say beautiful. a thing. See, you know, absolutely right. innocent. So what's his name? Um, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I've lost my memory since Michael's not here. I don't remember anything. I'm like oh. looking for something, looking for a tape measure and it's all gone. But um, but he has uh, 10 girlfriends at the moment, Sussex and um, some crowed Langshans as well. So wow. they're, all wow. his, they're all the rejects that didn't lucky make it in. Um, yeah. Very lucky. And mm. the way he carries on, he knows it. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm more, I mean, you know, we've got so many dogs at our centre, right? Right. And... Um, the, the main problem that I'm thinking that neighbours are going to have is not all of these dogs in boarding or the dogs in daycare. It's this damn rooster that is just yeah. telling the world how many shillings he's got in his coop. Mm. <laughs> well, um, I guess by the sound of things, you're uh, feeling a, a little bit lost without your partner, a little bit of separation anxiety? Yes, yes. I, I'm, I'm, like, I'm like the typical dog owner that comes in and says... I'm suffering from separation anxiety. Yes, yes, <laughs> definitely. And um, they, they of course, uh, a little bit confused. But I am suffering, Dr Joe. I'm suffering from Aww. separation anxiety to my little Maltese. Right, yes. Lots of owners do. You know, the ones that come to me and say, you know, I'm missing my dog. And then say, my dog's missing me even more. And I think, well, hang on here. There's a lot of missing going on, a lot of anxiety. So, you know, probably one feeding off the other. Mm. So probably your Maltese is missing you just as much. I hope so, sitting there on a beach in Malta, you know, loving, <laughs> loving the 40-degree days while we're here, <laughs> slaving away, trying to get ready for chicken camp. Yeah, mm. I'm sure he's missing me. So not a little fluffy white Maltese. We're talking six-foot Maltese. Yes, yes six-foot yeah, six well, with lots of muscles, Dar. We're going to take a break and um, uh, just thought you'd like to see the studio and see the chooks here today. And we're going to talk about separation anxiety coming up with Dr Joanne Rigetti in just a moment right here on Pet Talk Radio. I can smell this chook's breath. It's so funny. <laughs> She's like breathing because of the, you know, the, yeah. the thing, the gap. You can actually feel the hotness of her breath. Lucky you. That is, <laughs> you're kind of cool. Oh, she's a very cool bird. Yeah. Yeah. And she's a very lucky bird. Um, Trudy actually bought her um, for me for Mother's Day yeah. um, last year. <laughs> and so that's why she's named Tickety after her because that's her nickname. Trudy, she yeah. she always says tickety boo. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. How yeah, funny. and so we refer to her as tickety, and yeah. and uh, um, yeah, so she's named after her. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on here? There we go. You wouldn't even know. You wouldn't even know there was a little accident in the studio. <laughs> all Oops. clean. All clean. Oops. Oops, tickety. <laughs> it's great. There we go. How did you go with hot mouth? Yeah, she's she's hot. <laughs> yeah, she, she wasn't willing to breathe on me. I could smell it, but she's yeah. not. She's, she's, she's only got eyes. Me. That's right. 